What's up, everybody? Matt Kajewski here with the Osmo Fantasy Football Channel, and we are talking every single rookie skill position player you need to know ahead of the 2022 NFL Draft. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We are also brought to you today by Underdog Fantasy, and if you've never heard of Underdog, they're known for their best ball drafts, but they have a lot more. From best ball, they also have live drafts, pick em contests where you can win up to 20x your entry fee. If you use the promo code AWESOMO, you are going to get a match deposit bonus up to $100. So make sure to check out Underdog Fantasy today. And we have a quick hitter video getting through all of the major skill position players in this draft. Receiver is a position of strength first and foremost. So where I want to start is with the top receivers in this class. And they continue to rise up boards. There's a chance we see upwards of six, seven, maybe even eight receivers come off the board in this class. And right now, betting markets are projecting six. That's the over-under. Wouldn't be surprised if there's even more. When we look at the teams that are receiver needy in this class, they litter the first round. You have the Jets at four and 10. You have the Falcons at eight. The Commanders at 11 could look for a compliment to Terry McLaurin. The Texans, they pick twice. And they're a team that could look to add pieces around Davis Mills. The Eagles at 15-18, Saints at 16-19, the Patriots, Packers with two picks, the Bills, and even the Chiefs at 29 and 30. Receiver is going to come off the board early and often, and it starts with Garrett Wilson, Ohio State product. He checks in at just under six feet, 183 pounds, and this is a guy that produced immediately the second he stepped on the field at Ohio State, alongside some other first-round picks, including Chris Olave, who we'll get to, and Jackson Smith and Jigba, potential first-rounder in next year's class. He also ran a 4.38 40-yard dash, absolutely blazing speed from Garrett Wilson. According to prop bet markets, it looks like he could be the first receiver off the board inside the top 10 here. Beyond him, we have a couple players that are a little more skilled in terms of one-trick ponies, but they still offer a lot to NFL offenses. And one is Jamison Williams. His key is going to be speed. Didn't see him test in the offseason process due to that ACL tear in the national championship game. But Williams, good size. He's about six one and a half, and he stands 179 pounds. So a little slighter in frame, but again, hasn't been able to train because of that torn ACL. Now, he's a guy that transferred from Ohio State, but can't knock him for playing behind Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. And he goes to Alabama. It's not like he transfers to a G5. In his year with Alabama, he knocks notches 79 catches for 1,572 yards and 15 scores. Yeah, this guy, now that he's getting healthier, likely to come off the board inside the top 10. We also have Drake London. He's going to be your bigger bodied receiver. Actually played scholarship basketball for USC before he transitioned full-time to football. 6'4", 219 pounds. Broke his ankle in the season, so he did not test. But luckily, we got to see a pro day workout from London. Now, don't knock him for running. He's a guy that hasn't been able to train. He's been in rehab since that midpoint of the season. But he knocked notches 88 receptions for 1,084 yards in just eight games with USC target share north of 30%. He also had a lot of production on screen catches. They like to get him in space. You'll often hear him as a contested catch receiver. He did a lot more than that at USC. Number four. We'll get to Chris Olave, the other Ohio State receiver, six feet tall, 187 pounds, 43940 or dash. And he is going to be your best pure route runner in this class. Four year player with Ohio State. He actually never got to 1,000 yards receiving, but he did notch 2,711 yards in the large part of three seasons, only played a little bit as a freshman. But that is all American production from Olave. And he could be a fantastic complement to a receiver that is already maybe a bona fide stud like a Terry McLaurin. So look for Olave to come off the board early at the receiver position. Number five receiver is Traylon Burks coming out of Arkansas, a player who is extremely athletic. He's 6'2", 225 pounds, bigger body. He ran the 4'5", 5'40", yard dash, and people have knocked him for that in the draft process. But college GPS tracking data already told us that this is a guy with elite high-end speed, clocked over 20 miles per hour multiple times, and he's a player that has immense production produced right away when he was a freshman. And he highlights all of that production with 66 receptions, 1,104 yards this year. He's a player that was often used in the slotted on screen passage, which is a knock on him from a production standpoint. But again, 
Arkansas not the best offense. They were just prioritizing getting their best playmaker the ball in space. Transitioning to the running back position, we have a couple backs we need to know right away. It's a weaker class overall, but it's highlighted by bell cow back Reese Hall, 5'11", 217 pounds, coming out of Iowa State, three-year starter, over 1,400 yards each of the past two years, over 23 receptions every single year, and he ran the 4.3940 yard dash. Now, he did struggle a little bit from a force missed tackle per attempt perspective, yards after contact per attempt. He didn't always play to that athleticism, but if we're talking about players that have the chance to be bell cow backs, it's Brees Hall from a size-adjusted speed perspective. Outside of Hall, we also have Kenneth Walker in this class, who's a bit smaller. The Wake Forest transfer played his most recent season at Michigan State. He's 5'9", 211 pounds, also clocked in at a 4.3840 yard dash. Kenneth Walker was the best pure runner in this class, led the class in four missed tackles per attempt, had 1,600 rushing yards and 18 scores this year. The issue is receiving. Now, we don't know if this is a Walker issue or a Michigan State offense issue, but he wasn't asked to catch passes, just 13 receptions for 89 yards and one score for Kenneth Walker. Still has the chance to be an early draft pick in this class. And the last, I think, potential bell cow runner we have is going to be Isaiah Spiller. Texas A&M, he's 6 feet, 217 pounds, but he doesn't have the requisite athleticism as the other backs. He ran a 4.63 40 yard dash, and there are players that have been in that range. Kareem Hunt stands out, but the likelihood of his bust is a little bit higher. Now, three-year starter for A&M had at least 946 yards all of those years, caught at least 20 passes in each of those three seasons too, so he can play on every down. Isaiah Spiller, he is somebody to watch in this draft. If he gets the capital, we could like where he lands. The last player I want to mention at the running back position before we hit some QBs and tight ends is James Cook. 5'11", 199 pounds. Actually checked in much heavier than we thought he might. He's the Georgia back, the complement to Zamir White, but he's the pure pass catching back for this offense. 27 catches this last year. He runs a 4.42 40-yard dash, and that pass catching ability comes with versatility to be flexed out in the slot. Think of him as your Alvin Kamara light of this class. James Cook, if he can slide into a James White role or maybe even an Austin Eckler type role, could be very usable for fantasy in the near future. Outside of running back and receiver, the class gets a little bit weaker. At the quarterback position, there's just not as many household names, and the class is certainly weaker than last year. Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis highlight this group. Pickett is more of your pocket passer coming out of pit, sort of a one-year wonder. He nearly doubled his passing yardage from the previous seasons this year. So that is a concern, but Pickett should be off the board pretty early. And if you can find a favorable landing spot, wouldn't really dislike it. Maybe a Carolina with the DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson could make sense. But Malik Willis is the real fantasy, the suitable name for fantasy here at the quarterback position. Liberty QB, Auburn transfer. He's 6'1", 6 six feet and a half, 219. Did not run the 40-yard dash, but he was clocked in the four threes at a younger age at Auburn. And we like him because of the rushing ability. This is a guy that had over 800 rushing yards in back-to-back -back seasons. And he sort of offers you a decent blend of Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts style rushing. He's bigger than Lamar Jackson, but he has a little more wiggle and force miss tackle ability than a guy like Jalen Hurts. So he's an interesting blend. A lot of people have compared him to Michael Vick, and I could see some of those as well. At the tight end position, it's really just one guy at the top by himself. It's Trey McBride, and he's somebody who probably wouldn't be drafted that highly in other classes, but he's 6'4", 246. Ran a 4.56 Ford Air Dash, which is more than acceptable for his size and weight. Had 1,121 receiving yards this year, just one touchdown. He played in that run-heavy Colorado State offense, but he's a player that lacks a little bit of size and blocking ability, I think, here at 246, but he certainly could get on the field for, for every down, depending on the landing spot here. So love Trey McBride. And circling back to some other receivers, it's a spot where we could see Sky Moore, George Pickens, Khalil Shakir, and there's a lot of names that could come off the board on day two. So it's not just the five at the top. Christian Watson, he's another guy from North Dakota State. Watch these names on draft day. We could see a lot of players come off the board at the receiver position with fantasy relevance. And those are just a few to watch a little later on. But I'm Matt Gajeski on Twitter, at Matt underscore Gajeski. Those are the main rookies you need to know. They're round one rookies and a couple names for day two. Let me know who you think comes off the board early and could produce for fantasy. I will see you again next time and look out for more draft coverage this week.